I'm James Taylor. Welcome to part three of the Maya gun modeling tutorial. This time we're looking at creating the kind of detail that we need to really sell a hard surface model. So we'll continue to use the tools that we did in the first two parts of this tutorial. So the multi-cut tool, connect components, we use extrude to inset faces as I'm doing here. And we'll also continue to rely heavily on the bevel tool for reasons that I'll explain later. Now I've extruded this shape into the side of the gun body and I'm going to rely on my smooth tools to create the smooth caps at the ends of each part of this object. However, I need to make use of the crease tool here and we'll also see that placement of my edges makes a big difference in creating that round shape. And I'm showing this to make one point. When working on hard surface models at the highest level, we need to make sure that our straight lines are straight and our curved lines are curved properly. We can't get away with any wobbly lines or jittery curves. Our viewer is going to notice details like that. Okay, let's look at the ejection port on the side of the gun. I'm going to use my extrude and my bevel and my connect components tool to just inset a little bit of new detail and then extrude that back into the body of the gun. Now there's nothing really new or surprising here. What I want to draw attention to is the border that I create around the ejection port. And I'll use extrude to pull that out and to separate these details. And this kind of detail is extremely important for creating hard surface models. It creates a transition between two surfaces and this mimics the way that actual manufactured objects are built. Parts have to be connected together somehow, whether it's with rivets or screws or glue. We want to mimic that feature of actual mechanical objects in our model. So I can't emphasize the importance of these transitions enough. We want to use our extrude tools or our mesh extract to create extrusions or to break faces apart so that we have nice crisp borders between shapes on our object. Okay, let's build something more complicated. I'm working on the hinge for the stock and I've started with a cylinder and I extruded a few edges out to create this extended portion here. Now I'm just going to grab all my faces and extrude inwards to create the depth of the surface. And that will line up with that pin object that I've created in the center. Now I need to use my cut tools to get rid of any overlapping geometry and then create a socket that I can plug this object into on the stock. So you'll see that I just inset some faces and create a square that's about the right shape for my hinge and then I can delete those faces out. I still need to worry about connecting all those shapes though. So I want to combine these two objects together so that I can merge verts. I do need to make sure that I have an agreement in the number of verts. So here you'll see I'm adding in a couple verts on the stock so that it will match up to that gap between the two parts of the hinge so that when I do combine them, all the verts will merge. I won't have any smoothing problems. Once everything is connected up, then I can start grabbing edges around the borders of my objects and using the bevel tool. And this will add that nice bevel detail that's absolutely essential to creating the look of machined objects. So I'll use a relatively small bevel and then I want to make sure to go in and just use my hardened edges on the edges of those bevels so that I get a nice sharp highlight. Okay, next up we're going to look at two different ways of creating grip detail for our handles. And the first way I'm using a cube and I'm going to adjust the subdivisions until I get something that matches my reference. And what I'll do is I'll just delete every other set of faces so that I'm left with just one side of faces and I'll extrude those through the handle. And once that's set, I'll delete history on both of those objects, freeze the transforms, and use my Boolean difference to subtract those boxes from the handle. And now the resulting geometry, I need to clean up. So I use the Merge Verts tool to fix the outside and then the inside faces I just delete and then select around the edges and use my fill hole to fill that in. And now I can select those new faces and extrude them backwards to create the depth in this surface here. Then I'll just go through and select the edge loops around each one of these grooves and grab those edges and then crease them to get nice sharp edges. And now I'm on to the front of the gun where we're going to use a completely different technique. We're going to use bevel. So I'll cut in two edges that define the outer extents of this area and then I'm going to cut in an edge that sits on the center and bevel that edge. 
and I'll adjust the number of segments on that bevel until I get something that matches my reference. And now the process is similar to what we were doing before. We see that the bevel does do something weird on the inside, so we have to delete those faces and then just extrude the faces on the side over into the center. And then I'll spend time cleaning up my geometry. So straightening edges, merging verts, making sure that everything is set. Once I start extruding in this area, it becomes very difficult to change shapes. So I want to make sure that everything is correct before I do that. And I delete the border around the grip object. This will isolate the detail in this area so that it won't continue back into the main body and complicate things. And instead of extruding, I'll bevel the edges to create the horizontal rows that I want. This will make things easier because it'll save me from having to bevel the final result. I'll do the same thing on the side and I'll end up with these shapes that I'll select manually. And now I can extrude inwards and I'll see that that extra row that I cut in on each one of these subdivisions creates a nice little beveled area that keeps my detail very sharp. Naturally, I'll bevel all of these edges so that they maintain their shape when I smooth. And then I'll use the bridge and the fill hole tool to connect the grip and the body back together. Here's the trigger guard, and now I want to attach it to the main body. I'll extrude out the open edges to create a flat surface, and this new flat surface will essentially be the connection point between the handle and the trigger. So I'll cut holes into the body on each side of the trigger guard, and now I need to mesh these two shapes together. So I want to make sure that when I'm connecting two objects, I'm matching the topology perfectly, I'm adding in verts where I need them, and I'm removing verts where I don't need them. By connecting an object in this fashion, we get a much smoother blend, and we have much more control than if we were to connect objects using Boolean like we did with the hand grip. Keeping our topology as clean as possible will make it a lot easier to edit our objects and we'll see what happens when we don't have clean topology later on in the video. Now onto the side logo. I start with a cube and I collapse one set of edges to create a triangle. I'll bevel the remaining edges and up the segments on the bevel to create nice round corners and then inset the center face and collapse those edges. Now it's a simple matter of using my cut tools to cut in the rest of the shape. I'll even add tiny bevels to all my edges this is the kind of detail that we won't see unless we get very close, but it's the kind of thing that sets a high quality hard surface model apart from a low quality model. And I'll just cut in a socket on the main body and subdivide the edges on the socket to match up to the logo so that I can combine the body and the logo together. Next up is the rail on the top of the gun. And like a lot of machined objects, the rail has a lot of repeated features. In this case, it's easier to build a small part of the object and then duplicate that part over and over to create the whole shape. I'll bevel all the edges and otherwise finalize the object because once I start duplicating, it'll be difficult to make changes. And then I'll duplicate the object and move it and go to my edit menu and use duplicate with transform. And that will duplicate my object and repeat the last transformation, making it extremely easy to create the overall object. And all that's left is to combine and merge my verts. And let's keep going with this top area. I'm going to build this scope here and start from a cube. I'll use my bevel on the corner and add a bunch of segments to round that edge out. And I'll do that along the rest of the mesh as well to create enough detail to get the nice mix of curvature and sharp edges that are here. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'll cut a line down the center of each side of the object and I'll bevel that line and I'll just take the resulting row of faces and pull it straight out. And in this fashion, I'll create kind of that beveled edge that I need. Doing it this way gives me a little bit more control than actually beveling it because the bevel tool doesn't work that great on strange corners and curves like I have on this object. Now on the main body, there are two little dials that I wanna add and I'll start those as cylinders and I'll connect them up and we'll do it very similar to those grooves on the body in the last video. So I'll inset some faces on the main body here. I'll delete those and then I'll combine these two shapes together. And now I use my merge verts tool to connect all the verts from the cylinders to the verts on the body object. 
And topology in this area is something we really want to pay attention to. It will be very easy to get smoothing errors in a complicated area like this. So we pay attention to making sure that we don't have any triangles that are too long and that our surfaces remain flat. Then I can go through and crease my edges and I'm ready to start extruding out the rest of the detail. So I just inset some faces and I pop it out the same way that I created the rivet in the previous video. Next, I wanna create these tiny pips that outline each one of these screws. So I'll start with a single cylinder and I'll change its pivot point so that it lines up with the center of those screws. And then I'll go to my edit menu, I'll use duplicate special, and I'll adjust the settings so that I'm duplicating it multiple times and I'm adding a slight rotation to it. And just like duplicate with transform, I end up with all my shapes, but I spend about zero time creating them. So again, any time that we can duplicate to create our detail, we want to take advantage of that. Next up is the clip. And to create detail on the clip, I'm going to use Booleans. So I've created these cylinders, I'll Boolean them out of the side of the clip. And when I do, I see that I get open edges instead of the shapes that I expected. And this is because the original clip shape is an open shape. Once I close it off and make it a solid object, and now when I Boolean, I'll see that I get a different result. The Booleans are actually cut in there and I have the right surface. So I'll do that on the back side as well. One problem with this approach is the Boolean creates awkward tessellation in the region. This is going to make it much harder for me to edit any of my shapes going forward. So I'll delete this open edge and I'll see that that fixes my smoothing problems. This does mean that I'm not going to be able to edit anything on the cylinder. So I make sure that it's finalized before I Boolean. Okay, now it's time to start adding final level detail. So I'll start with a simple object on the stock. I'll smooth it and add a bunch of subdivisions and then I'll start optimizing it. But this will be tedious to do manually. So I'm going to use my symmetry tool. So shift and control and right click and I'll turn on symmetry. And I want to make sure that I'm setting the symmetry to the right axis, but usually it won't work. I want to make sure to center my pivot and then try symmetry again. This will usually fix it. And in 2015, when we're using our symmetry or our mirror tools, Maya will mirror not just the selection, but also actions. And at our highest level of resolution, basically anywhere there's an angle, we want to add a bevel. So the angle where the cylinder meets the flat part, I add a little bit of bevel around the cap bases at the cap of the cylinder. I'm going to add a bevel. And in most cases, I'm adding relatively narrow bevels. This will create a sharp highlight in the area. And that sharp corner highlight is really one of the keys to making our hard surface objects look tactile. We want the viewer to feel like they could reach out and touch our object. And that's why you see I'm spending so much time here working on the bevels, adjusting on the bevels, making sure that the bevels flow into each other nicely. Bevels are that high level of detail that we really need to create an awesome looking hard surface model. Here you'll see I'm adjusting some curvature. This is the kind of detail that's small enough that we might think that the viewer wouldn't notice, but taking care of details like these is what separates a good modeler from an amateur. Now on to creating bevels for the body. The body is a much more complicated shape, so getting these bevels to work is going to be more difficult. So I'm going through and I'm meticulously selecting the edges that I need to bevel, and then I'll bevel these a small distance, and I want to go back through and double check and make sure that everything beveled correctly. In a lot of cases, bevel will hit some places but miss others. While I'm doing this, it can be easier to select face rows instead of selecting edge rows. So you'll see that I'm just clicking on the faces and then I can convert my selection to the edge perimeter. And now I can go through and crease these faces. That'll make it really easy to get the detail that I need when I start smoothing. I do want to make sure to crease the corner edges as well to make sure that I get proper shape in those regions. Now earlier I mentioned that bad topology would get us into trouble. And here's the issue that we're having. The handle has a lot of different shapes on it. That makes it difficult to select easily. And if it's difficult to select, that means it's difficult to work with. I need to be able to crease this handle before I can smooth. So what can we do in a situation like this? I'm going to select 
one groove on my handle and then go to the edit menu and choose select similar. And we'll see that that selects a little bit, but in order for select similar to be useful, usually we need to adjust its threshold. So we type in bigger numbers until eventually it will select all the different grooves. Now generally it'll also select a bunch of other stuff, so double check the model to make sure that you deselect those parts. And just like on that earlier piece, I've smoothed my object now, and because I've creased everything, I should get a lot of nice beveled looking detail. The issue that we'll have is that when we smooth our object, all of our hard edges become soft. So we have to go through and select all those beveled edges and use the harden edge command. So in a lot of cases, we'll be able to double click to select rows and select the entire row and then we can harden it. In other cases, we'll select by faces and then convert the face row to the edge perimeter. In some cases, we don't have bevels like on these grooves on the side, but we've got enough subdivisions that we can move around existing rows to create the effect of a bevel. So I can take this row and push it out a little bit. I can take the row near the bottom and adjust its position and then harden those edges and that'll give us an effect that looks just like a bevel if we didn't bevel ahead of time. So here's a breakdown of the key points that we went over. You can click on any of these and go back to that part of the video to review. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm James Taylor.